welcome to computer says no and this is the third video uh, if I'm not mistaken um, in the series and uh, in this one we're going to take a look at getting you set up with immunity debugger and getting our vulnerable binary um, our process uh, attached inside of immunity and um, also checking out the intended functionality of the program so I'm assuming you've got do stack buffer overflow good um, hanging around you should because you're going to need it if you want to follow along. Check the uh, first video if you need the details on where to find that. So right click it and run it as administrator like I just did. Um, and if everything is working correctly, you'll see that it just listens in the terminal prompt for incoming connections. So that is good. If you do have an error uh, about a certain DLL, you're most probably missing um, that DLL. And what you'll need to fix it is this uh, file here. So you could Google VC underscore redist dot x86 um, for the Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 redistributable for um, x86. That'll give you the DLL that you need. Also do run Immunity Debugger as administrator. Um, and then you'll want to go to File and Attach. Uh, but before we do that, you'll see these windows haven't opened um, the way they should normally. Immunity can be a bit buggy for some reason um, with the windows I have found. So close that, just go to view and CPU um, or Alt, Alt C yeah, is the shortcut to bring up the CPU window. This is the window pane that we will be um, concerning ourselves with mostly. So if anything goes wrong, just hit view and go to CPU. You'll be good to go. So we need to attach our process. So go file and attach select the binary name from the menu click attach if you cannot see the process in that window it is most likely because you haven't um, started immunity as administrator so make sure you do that in the bottom right hand corner down here you'll see that the program is paused by default that is often uh, well it is always the case um, i think it, you know it's to allow you to set breakpoints and this sort of thing um, so anyway f9 is the key to run um, also control F2 is how you reset a process once um, if you when we do start crashing the process so anyway F9 F9 on the keyboard to get it running you'll see we have now got the running status down here in the bottom right um, so now that that's running I'm just going to minimize it and uh, show you this little Python script that I had prepared earlier Yeah, so it's basic stuff. I just want to show you how the program was intended to work. So, um, yeah, I've got a uh, local uh, 127.0.0.1 and a port defined on lines three and four, creating the socket on line six um, and our payload that I want to send into the program onto that uh, listening connection uh, is just going to be a string. Computer says no uh, and a space. And then down here when I send it in after we connect on line 11, um, and I'm going to send it in. So I'm going to send the payload. I'm going to append a new line character to the end of it. That's important. Um, I think I mentioned it. I hope I mentioned it in the code uh, sort of review in the end of the last video. Um, the function will only reply, will only respond, and therefore trigger the vulnerability if we send something in with a new line character. Um, yeah, so if you're following along, mate, and, and it's not overflowing um, the way you think it ought to be, don't forget that new line character. Um, and then we're just listening for a response and printing the response to the screen. So let me pull up uh, both of these command prompts and you'll see what happens when I fire this script off. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, where'd that go? There we go. So. Uh, the program over here on the right hand side says yeah we received a connection you know we received 18 bytes we sent 27 back and you disconnected um, which is all true so here it is my printing uh, print output yeah I'm connecting sending the payload payload sent and here is the response so hello computer says no with the exclamation marks um, all right so what do you think is going to happen if we send 300 A's into the program now instead of just a short little response like that well Let's give it a go. So I'm going to say A times 300. Control S to save that script. Um, 
copy and paste, or not copy and paste, type this script out um, if you guys um, aren't familiar with um, this sort of thing. If you haven't worked with sockets before, guys, um, pause the screen and type this out because this is going to be the basis for our exploit script moving forward. So I'm going to jump back into Immunity and reset. Um, oh no, I'd have to reset anything because... See how the registers have disappeared here? Sometimes that happens, so I'm just going to close that. Go view, oh no, we'll go Alt C. And we've got our registers back. So I don't need to reset it because I didn't crash it. I've saved that. And uh, I'm just going to send this script again with the 300 A's. Payload sent. Oh, we see immunity flashing down here. And we have paused the program because it has crashed. So um, I know it is a stretch, guys. I have tried to enlarge um, the font beyond... Uh, beyond its current size, but I haven't been too successful. I'll muck around with it um, in another video. But for now, if you look to um, EIP, you'll see we have um, 41, 41, 41, 41, which is hex for capital A. Um, EBP is overwritten with 41, 41. And ESP, if we click on this memory address and say follow in stack, um, yeah, we can see that it points to an area in memory where this buffer is just, uh, yeah, full of A's. A's, 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 A's. Um, so there you go, we've got data into EIP, so EIP can for sure be controlled. Um, you know, this video is at the nearly seven minute mark, so that's probably enough. Um, in video four, I'll show you um, uh, how to set up a working folder um, in Mona so we can uh, get some of our output saved for our scripts and stuff that we run in Mona. Um, I'll show you about pattern offset and pattern create. Um, you will find that offset exactly so we know uh, yeah, exactly where uh, to write to EIP and then we'll send in some C's and have a look at uh, making some room, uh, finding the room, making sure there's adequate, adequate room rather for our shell code. Um, so that should be video four. Uh, it'll be good. I'll see you in the next one.